Hey guys, on today's video, I'm going to show you how to lay out and cut your own pinwheel damper. Stay tuned. This damper I'm going to show you how to build today is a pinwheel damper and where you would see a pinwheel damper is on the firebox door. It's a round damper and it sometimes looks like it's got two holes in it that are across from each other like a like a piece of pot like pie shaped holes and you rotate the damper you know whichever direction to open and close that damper and by opening and closing the damper you can control your temperature by letting more air into the fire or controlling how much air gets in there open and close closed is is cooler open is hotter so the first of all you need to know what you need for a damper the, the best way to do that is to look at our website, bbqpitcalculator.com. If you look in the comments, there's going to be a link to that website there. Um, basically, you just click on that link, go to, the for, go to that website, and it's going to ask you four or five questions. It's going to say, what kind of cook chamber do you have? What's the size of the cook chamber in gallons or cubic inches or length and diameter? Something like that. Input that information. Then you're going to be able to fill out your firebox portion of that questionnaire, your smokestack, your all that stuff. And when you get down to the bottom of it, it's going to give you some results of the numbers you put in. Okay, In there, it's going to tell you the amount of square inches that are required for your firebox. That's the number we're going with here. So essentially, you're going to take and build a damper that is at least as big or two dampers that are at least as big as that square inches on the calculator. More is okay, less is usually not okay. So that's this kind of the rule of thumb here. In this case, I need a 12 inch, uh, 12 inch pinwheel damper, and I'm not really using it on this cooker, I'm not using it on the firebox door. I'm actually using this damper as a, as a different inlet for smoke and heat to get into my cook chamber. So anyway, what I've done here is I want a 12 inch, and when I say 12 inch, I mean the outside diameter of the circle. Okay, now the square inches of the opening, the hole I cut in the damper, is what we're going to use from that number from barbecuepitcalculator.com. Um, anyway, we're going to divide this circle, this 12 inch circle, up into quadrants. Okay, so just imagine you take a piece of pie and you cut it once this way and once this way. Now you have four equal shaped pieces, those are quadrants. Okay, quad, quad or four. So what I've done here, I drew this circle first of all with, uh, with a compass. This is a pair of dividers is what this is. And there's a soapstone in it. So you won't be able to see it as good on the camera probably. But what I did is I set this compass originally for six inches. That's the radius, which is half the diameter of your circle, okay? So, and I'm just kind of like roughly setting this here. There's six inches, okay? And I usually try to go from the outside edge of my soapstone. If you've got something that's a lot more accurate and it's got a point on it, like a marker or something like that, you can go to the center of that. The next thing I have to do is I have to decide, first of all, you wanna make sure and mark your center because you're gonna need your center mark for everything. I drilled a hole there. I didn't even drill a complete hole. I just took like an eighth inch drill bit if you look right here, it's an eighth inch drill bit. And I, after I found my center point, I drilled a hole so that things like this point on my compass could sit in that hole, right? Anyway, we're gonna use that as a reference point for the entire rest of this layout. So the next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to figure out where is a center line across this circle. So there's a thing called bisecting the circle, okay? So what you'll do is you'll take your compass, if we're a 12 inch, we wanna set our compass bigger than our radius. Radius again is half the diameter of the circle, so that would be six inches. And it just pick a number, it doesn't have to be exact, this looks about seven inches, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pivot side of our compass and we're just gonna pick any place on the outside of that circle. And we're gonna take that chalk and we're just gonna scribe an arc an arc is going to be a portion of that circle, just a short piece. We're gonna scribe an arc like that. 
Okay, now I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to scribe another line, another arc. And I didn't change my compass. It's exactly the same place as it was a minute ago. So now I've got these two intersecting arcs here. And what happened is, is because I came from the outside of the circle on both sides, I was able to intersect these arcs where I can draw a line straight through there with a straight edge and that will establish my center line. I'm going to use this square is what I typically use uh, when I'm doing something like this. And so what you're going to do is where those arcs intersect, all you're going to do is just kind of lay this on top of that and then you're going to make a mark. And I've already got a mark there so I'm not going to bother. But that's what this line right here is. Okay, now we need to find the center line of this, the perpendicular to that line, which is going to be ac directly across the center exactly of that line. How do we do that? We're going to get our compass again, and we're going to do an operation similar to the first two radiuses or arcs that we, that we drew. In this case, we're going to shorten this down. So we have a 12-inch circle. Our radius is 6 inches, right? So I like to go about half of the radius. And what we're going to do is we're going to go about three inches, something like that. And we're going to go back to our center point again. And we're going to make a mark that goes like this. It's basically going to go all the way through our, from our baseline all the way up to the center here. So now we have a coordinate, which is a place that we can swing yet another arc from. Okay, stay with me. I know this is a lot. So we want to go back and go bigger than whatever our center is there. I didn't measure this, so I'm just gonna lay my compass down right here like this, and I'm just gonna see that, look, I'm on that spot that I just swung, and I'm bigger than the distance to center. So what I'm gonna do there now, I'm gonna swing two more arcs, one from this point and one from the other point I just made. And if you can see that chalk mark, you'll see that this line I drew earlier is exactly in the center where those two radiuses intersect. Now I can take my square, this frame and square, and I can use my original baseline as the bottom part of my square. And I'm going to run this leg of the square up through that other arc where they intersect. And then I'm going to draw that line. I've already drawn it a minute ago, right there. Okay, now I have a perpendicular line that goes one way. I'm going to take the long edge of my square, and I'm just going to very carefully lay it on that mark I just made across center, and then I can actually mark all the way across. So now I have divided this circle into four perfectly equal quadrants. The next thing I want to do, if I was to cut out this quadrant, I wouldn't have any meat in the center of the, of the uh, pinwheel damper to run a bolt through. So I've got to have to, I'm gonna have to block out part of this for a circle shaped or square. Doesn't really matter what shape, but I'm gonna have to leave some meat here that I can drill a hole in so I can have a bolt place to bolt this to my door or whatever I'm bolting this to. So I like to use like a two, two inch. Um, this, uh, this compass right here, it's, uh, I can get down there pretty close. I'm just gonna use this deal here to set approximate center. So if we want a two inch circle, we're gonna go one inch, one inch on our radius, which is half the. Here, now we need to have some meat around the outside edge that's gonna prevent the piece from just like totally falling out. So since we're a 12 inch circle, right, I could safely, I like to keep about a half inch to five eighths, three quarters of an inch or so from the edge, just to give this some, some stiffness to this blade. Now this is quarter inch plate, so a half inch is plenty. So you could literally just guess here and just put this in the middle and just kind of guess where you want that. Or you could measure, since it's a 12 inch circle, six inches, we would knock a half inch off of that, we would go five and a half, and I'm pretty much already there. Just set that with your ruler there. And now we're gonna do the same thing we just did. We're just gonna draw that circle all the way around. Okay, now we're done with the compass now. 
The next step is we're going to have two pie-shaped holes that are smaller than the amount of meat that's left on the other, the perpendicular side of this blade so that when we rotate that blade shut, we're going to have two pieces of meat that will cover our hole, okay? And that's really important. So all we got to do to do that is we're going to take our center lines, our baseline and our intersecting line that we just drew, and we're going to pick one pie slice that is equal and opposite of each other, and we're going to shrink that in a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay, so we're just going to take this here and just look and measure off a quarter of an inch. I'm actually going to do, oh, oh, and it's important to point out, you're going to have to do the inside of the piece that you want. So on this end, of, on the one end of the line, we're going to be on one side. On the other side of the line, we're going to be on the other side. So I'm going to do this top section first, and then we're going to go to the middle and do the same thing. Now we're going to go to the opposite side, okay? Now I've got one direction. Now I need to go the other way. Well, I chose the inside of this and the inside of this one. So I've got to offset that way, the inside of this one, and that side of this next one here. Okay, now we're just going to draw our lines and make sure we've got everything squared off here. Essentially, we're going to cut this piece, and then we're going to cut this piece out. Once we cut that out, we're going to go in here and cut our whole, our inside radiuses. Then we're going to cut the entire circle out. And then we'll be done. We'll have a blade. We can clean it up and move on. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make my pierce. And what I'll do when I'm piercing here is I'm going to, I'm going to kind of keep my distance up off the top and I'm going to plunge in so that I don't get a bunch of dross that gets up in my cutter and So I've got this thing laid out, I cut it, and all that stuff, we're going to pull it out of here and see what it looks like. Now bear in mind, this was cut by hand, you know, using some hand tools, so there might be a little bit of cleanup, requ little bit of cleanup required, but for the most part, I'd say this is a successful attempt at cutting out our own pinwheel damper. Now on the back side of this, you'll notice some dross and stuff like that. This dross right here is really built up. That's where I had to slow down for the camera. That's called low speed dross. You're gonna get a lot heavier buildup if you're going too slow. If you look, let's see, like right in here, um, right over here, this dross is not near as heavy buildup. That's where my travel speed was right. I was going fast enough. It's about 48 inches a minute on quarter inch plate typically at uh, 45 amps. So anyway, uh, your travel speed, things like that, how clean your air is, those kind of things will minimize this cleanup, but it knocks off really simple. I've got a little dead blow here. It's not gonna make a loud ding or nothing, but you can see that flaking right off. If you just lightly tap at that, this dross will fall off of there. And then you can set this damper down flat with the dross up. And if you have like a anti-skid mat, like one of those horse trailer mats or something, this will stay put real good. You can clamp it down, whatever. Use a flat hard disc, one that's meant for going flat, and you can kind of knock this dross off pretty quick, especially if you're painting it and, co and the color of the steel is not a problem. Now, you're probably asking about the hole in the middle of it. That's easy because I've already got a center hole from where I drilled earlier for my compass to sit in. So basically all you'll have to do is just set this in your drill press, clamp it to the table, 
get yourself a drill. I would drill probably a half inch hole in that. That's what I like to use, a half inch bolt. I think it looks best. You can put a little washer in there and stuff. Once you get your center hole drilled where you want this damper to be mounted on your, on your firebox door or whatever, then you literally just trace, just trace in this hole and that's your cut for inside the firebox door or whatever plate that this is mounted to. Um, anyway, so anyway, I hope you have found this video useful. Uh, make sure to like our channel, like this video, and subscribe to the channel. If you got anything out of this video that that was that's going to help you, make sure and comment about it down below. I want to make sure that our content is relevant to all you guys that are watching. And if you have an, a suggestion for a future video similar to this, make sure and tell me about it because I watch there to find out what you guys want. Um, anyway, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, and we'll see you on the flip side.